Studios, the AusBiz COB is the key stuff you need to know about the day in business and finance. Welcome to the COB. I'm Danielle Acuye. And I'm Juliette Sarli. And Danny, what a run up in markets in the last couple of hours or so. You and I are just trying to talk about what that could have been. I mean, we did have that weak PMI data from China. Is it speculation? The authorities are going to step in yeah. and prop up these markets again. Absolutely. So the ASX 200 and the CBO 200 uh, took off like proverbial Christmas crackers. That's Ooh. how I would like to phrase it. And there we can see on the chart 1 p.m. Just a, a little bit delayed, but around of sort of that circa uh, 12 to 1 p.m. The uh, CBO 200 saw quite a lot of buying interest and it looks like it's closing up just over half a percent or around 7.4 points in the ASX 200. Pretty perky as well, up 34 points to 7,069 and that's almost half a percent. Yeah, and really the financial, the IT, the industrial stocks leading the way, utilities under a bit of pressure, we'll get to that in a moment. In fact, we'll get to that now. It's about origin, isn't it? <laughs> it is about origin. Origin. origin is over, so to speak. I well, was I almost think going to do the origin blues, but I thought, <laughs> oh, I'm not the sure about that. The takeover is over. Origin <laughs> will still exist now, exactly. won't it? Yeah. Yeah, basically, the, the, the board has uh, knocked back the revised bid that has been put forward by the uh, consortium and uh, the share price was under pressure as a result mm. of that. So this has been a very drawn out thing for both Brookfield and EIG, but clearly Australian Super putting their foot down, saying there weren't enough details, they weren't comfortable with it. So Talking about the tax implication because yep. it's a mix of US and Australian mm. shares and cash. So yes, anyway, so now shareholders vote of course on Monday and it is likely that original bid is going to get completely thwarted as well. Yes. So the China Blues, we talked about the PMI, so still in that contractionary territory yep. and slowing uh, at a quicker pace in November in terms of factory floor um, disinflation, I guess we call it now. So again, is that just going to mean that there is going to be needing more stimulus from Beijing's, it yeah. seems, um, yeah. coppers that continue to, to pump up the economy. And when you put it in the context now, that um, I was chatting with Roger Montgomery about the potential that the US economy is actually slowing more than people realise. Europe, we know uh, China, uh, China, what am I trying to say? Germany has been under pressure because of course they're very exposed to the Chinese economy. So China is kind of not in this great position where the rest of the world's potentially slowing and they're still trying to kickstart their own economy. Mm. And unlike 2008 when China rode to the rescue of the world, and I'm not insinuating we're going into GFC, it's just you can see that there's some macro drivers potentially working against them. Yeah, and uh, anticipation of course as the OPEC Plus meeting ends. You were just talking to Vandana Hari. Yes. I used to speak to Vandana weekly in Singapore. She's a lovely and very smart lady. She what is fabulous. What did she tell you about that? Uh, well, ba basically there's sort of anything could happen at this stage. Mm. I mean, clearly there's a, n a number of players. They've all got their own vested interests. Um, at the end of the day, Saudi Arabia wants to really keep that oil price up at around US $80 a barrel. But because demand is, is softer and you've also got more production coming out of some of the extraneous um, players, so you're looking at Venezuela, you're looking at the likes of um, Iran and also Angolia and Libya wanting to continue to pump, as does Iraq. So the question mark becomes, um, and I would recommend highly everyone listens to Vandana rather than mm. me trying to surmise it because it is quite complex, um, is whether or not Saudi Arabia is prepared to keep on taking the big cuts themselves. Yeah. So as she was saying, we may actually have another deferral. So we may not have uh, the final news over the next 24 hours. We may go into another deferral. All right, let's look at sectors, kicking it off with uh, industrials and what we've seen there. Some good moves from Transurban Brambles. In fact, everything looking pretty positive when we look at the industrial space. And the banks were also stronger today, taking a very firm lead overnight from what are the, the banks in the US. Macquarie leading up 2.4%, but also NAB and Westpac up by over 1%. And just looking at utilities, I mentioned the origin story and that really dragged on the overall space. And 
AGL also down 2%. Interestingly, looking at some of those names there, it looks like a positive picture, but the sector was the weakest, down by 1.3%. And let's have a look at some of the corporate stories. And Fortescue and HTEC have signed a memorandum of understanding to develop an off-take opportunities for green hydrogen. Um, like that deal would also enable them to facilitate the growth of its green hydrogen transportation market. And uh, just worth noting that uh, Fortescue was up about 0.9%, but that probably has more to do with China. Yeah. All right. Iris, a very strong performer, 15.5%. It had its investor day today and it upgraded its earnings guidance for financial 2023. So that was behind its big rise. And Sky uh, City, let's try again, Sky City Entertainment shares are up about 1.2% after the High Court of New Zealand. Sorry, it's not. 3.6%. Yeah. Oh, 3.6%. Apologies. Ruled in favour of the casino operator's interpretation of a concession agreement with Macquarie over the termination of the 2019 deal to own and operate car parks at its flagship Auckland Casino. Lion Town Resources. Well, it was up 1.5% on the close. We did see the former Fortescue Metals Chief Financial Officer Ian Wells appointed to the board um, and, of course, Lion Town holding its AGM today. And Origin, as we've discussed, have rejected Plan B proposal lobbed by its bidders, the Brookfield-led consortium, as a last-ditch attempt to buy the company. Those shares were down by about 2.8%. Now, on the call today, which I hosted with Daniel Ortiz from um, Lincoln Indicators, or slash Stock Doctor, and Michael Cable, uh, Gable, I should say, from Fairmont Equities. We had two stocks of the day. Couldn't help yes. myself. We had Origin and Iris. So let's check in and see what they had to say. I'll be watching it quite closely. If you're in the stock, um, you know, at this point, you're, you're probably still happy to hold. Um, but I, I think there's a really great opportunity for people to watch this one and see what happens if the if the takeover doesn't go through. Yeah, I'm generally not interested in a business like like Origin, so I haven't been following and I don't have clients in it, but I think if you were sort of interested in seeing it through, I think at this point it would be a hold. Um, I wouldn't be buying it either. I just, you know, don't understand it to the yeah, yeah to the finite detail. All right. Well, of course, the second stock of the day, Iris. Yes, Iris, of course, because that one was rallying about 15%. So let's check in and see what they had to say on that one. We joke about these companies all the time in our team. We, we say these bombed out stories, someone's got to make a lot of money. But we just don't know if it's on the long or the short side. So I, I think we're happy just to, to be on the sidelines again. If I was in the stock now, I, I don't think you know, you'd be selling into strength, for example. I think you'd be happy with today's update, but the, for, for a buy, the, I've got to see more from the company at this point. Yeah, look, I think it's still a bit too hard to turn this, to call this the big turnaround. Yeah. So a bit more upside in the short term, I'd be happy to jump out and move on to something else. Well, welcome to the COB, David Scott from City Index. Always good to see you, Scotty. What was your thinking behind the late afternoon rally we saw? I know you're a China watcher. Was it that or was it something else? Because a lot of the heavy lifting also done by the banks today. Juliet, Danny, uh, month ends made for miracles, I think. Uh, ah. That's probably the best way to go and describe it. Uh, November 30th is probably uh, the, the date that everyone should be looking at and then putting two together. Uh, look, the, at the margin, the China similar story has been in the background for a while now, but uh, that's nothing new. Uh, I just think it might be a case of uh, no, a bit of uh, window dressing before we go and tick over into December. I think we both forgot what the Wait. date was. <laughs> you didn't see the, the facial expressions we like, like oh. <laughs> 30 days has September, April, June and November. Oh, it's simple as that. But it was interesting. It was the afternoon buying session, Scuddy. But hey, look, the, the narrative seems to be turning a little bit. Like we've seen bond rallies, or the bond market rally substantially in the US. Bill Ackman obviously talking his own book. What are you thinking about the, the potential for the US economy to be weaker than some of those other numbers that really are looking in the rear vision mirror? Danny, I can go and tell you I'm 
paying pretty close attention to the front end of that US curve. Uh, the initial excitement about yields coming off their highs, and of course, Ackman went and nailed the top there uh, with his call. Uh, I think he's starting to go get replaced a little bit by the speed that we're seeing those uh, unwind take place in that, uh, that front end, particularly the two-year part of the curve uh, and what we're seeing in Fed funds futures and OIS markets. It's really getting a sense now that the speed is suggesting that we might not be looking at a, a soft landing anymore. It could actually be a hard landing at some such. And I think that's why you're seeing outside of uh, the price action today in Asia, uh, the risk assets, I uh, know US equity markets and you know, a few of those other cyclical players have kind of stalled their rally over the past 24, 48 hours or so. Uh, I think tonight's PCE will be pretty important in the States. So uh, jobless claims data as well. Uh, also John Williams and the New York Fed will be out. So plenty to go and digest, but the fact that markets are sort of rallying still into that at this point in time uh, is a pretty good sign. What about the momentum we're seeing in the Aussie? We know that's also based on a weak dollar and the interest rate differential between the Fed and the RBA. But how much more legs do you think the Aussie has? Look, uh, in the short term, it's going to take a very, very soft core PCE number out uh, of the states tonight to go and get that momentum going. Near term, there's probably a risk of a pullback. Uh, it got rejected on it from a technical perspective uh, on downtrend and uh, no resistance uh, yesterday. But that's around about 66.60. If we get a soft number tonight, uh, look, it could be off to the races. Near term, look, the risks are probably to the downside. Longer term, I think it's uh, undeniably probably still to the upside. Uh, Scotty, we did have that lower than expected uh, October inflation read that came out uh, yesterday. Markets, though, are pricing, well, not really pricing an RBA hike next week. I mean, there's always a, a possibility <laughs> of a hike, but do you think that would be very out of character at this stage? Uh, given what's going on globally, uh, what the talk is from other central banks, uh, I think there is zero chance. The markets have got that pretty much priced in as well. I don't think any economist out there is predicting a hike as well. Let's go and uh, see what uh, we're looking at early next year. We'll get a much better indication as to whether this soft landing, hard landing scenario is taking place, and that will probably determine. But I'm not surprised to go and see the RBA still keeping quite a hawkish rhetoric. We saw that yesterday from the RBNZ as well. Uh, from a, a fundamental perspective, uh, our economies are still performing fairly well. And we came out of this pandemic uh, in a lockdown era later than the rest of the world. So that's something to consider as well. Strong population growth is another factor. Uh, so I'm, I'm not surprised to go and see that that risk of the potential uh, in a hike coming through the other uh, pipeline again early next year is uh, still in play. What are you reading into the momentum in gold at the moment? I read one uh, article, or I should say, call from a broker at Fundstrat that you could get to 2,500, which seems like he might be making a name for himself, but certainly gold has been on quite a bit of a run. 2,500, talk about a blow off top, that will be one for the ages. But look, <laughs> momentum, momentum has been absolutely uh, no, crazy strong uh, over the past month and a, a half. I'm not surprised you're going to see that. When you look at the two key drivers of gold longer term, We've got US dollar, well, it's come off the boil a lot, and real yields. Uh, I was looking today, I think 10-year benchmark real yields, so the inflation-adjusted series, uh, is 206 basis points. That was north of 260 basis points uh, only a month or so ago. That's a big drop. It's, it's still elevated uh, to what we're seeing over the past decade or so. But uh, that's gone and released a pressure valve on the gold price. And then you've thrown into the mix, of course, some uncertainty about what's going on in the Middle East. I'm not surprised you're going to see up at these levels. 2050 overnight, uh, look, that's not far off from the record highs. And look, again, tonight, uh, that PCE deflator comes out in the States. If it's soft, well, uh, we could be talking about record highs tomorrow. At what point, Scotty, is all this potentially uh, good news about, you know, inflationary pressures ebbing away going to turn into the proverbial, oh dear, <laughs> they've overdone it, as you said, hard landing and earnings suddenly will be under the microscope and potentially revised down? Look, uh, jobless claims data out tonight will be an interesting one. I'm expecting like an absolute volatile number in, in one direction. We saw last week trying to go and seasonally adjust around this time is very difficult with a Thanksgiving holiday. But if we see another back to back, you know, big increase in claims coming through, I think that's going to get a few people scared about the potential that we might go and see the US labour market starting to go and crack. We know that job advertisers are coming off the boil. We know that hiring is slowing. All the things you'd expect to see late cycle. Uh, at some point, I assume you'd imagine if we keep this, uh, this momentum up, well, there's likely to go and be a, a rise in unemployment uh, and also uh, potentially some job shedding taking place. A uh, quick one on Santa. Um, has he come? Is he coming? A <laughs> few more weeks. Has he lost his reindeers? <laughs> 
Is he ask in Adelaide? Ask me in 24 hours time. Yeah, ask me in 24 hours time after we get this uh, PCE deflator and Jerome Powell speaks uh, uh, tomorrow evening our time. That will go and uh, get a, a lot of indication as to what we're looking at at the moment. The momentum is certainly there at this point in time. I think it's now up to the data to go and show that the growth is, is holding up not so much that inflation is coming. That's pretty much in the price right now. Okay, Scuddy. So when I'm looking at my Twitter feed bright and early tomorrow morning, if I see Santa in his sleigh, I'll know what you're thinking. <laughs> That's a good one. I'll, I'll, be dressed up. I'll be dressed up for you. <laughs> Fantastic. That was David Scutt joining us from City Index. Let's have a quick look at the after close leaders and Scuddy pointing out that we'd forgotten what date it was, the 30th <laughs> of just November. Like the, the worst rookie error ever. <laughs> Oops. Both of us. What? What's happening? Iris up 15.5%. Uh, Telix Pharmaceuticals up 4.5%. Harvey Norman also up 4.5%. Fletcher Building and Reliance Worldwide with gains of around 4%. And let's check some of the laggards today and see what was their call. Lithium down by almost 6%. Interesting. Discuss Paladin Energy today on the call. Check it out online. Down about 3.5%. Goodman Group. I was fishing around to see why that was off 2.3%, but just generally the REITs were off today. Origin Energy we've discussed and also AGL coming under some selling pressure. And just looking at the small end of town in terms of the leaders, Byron Energy there, a gain of more than 14%. Uh, Clearview Technology of course has been in the news a fair bit at the moment moment and it had a gain of around 11%. And let's have a look at some of those small cap laggards and with 4D memory off 25%, Lake Resources very volatile off a 9% almost, Arafura rare earths off about 7 and Tamboran are down by also around 7%. All right, well, of course, what is happening over tonight, overnight, I should say, it is that uh, core PCE deflator index, very, very key, as Scuddy was telling us. We're also going to have initial jobless claims pending home sales from the US and some European CPI data. Yeah, and it'll be interesting too, because we've got Dell, Kroger, Marvell, and Alta Beauty. So we might also get, um, those companies are reporting, obviously, we might get a further look into how the US consumer is performing. Mm. Now, what is happening uh, tomorrow? And uh, there we go, house prices for November. Um, the US Fed Chair speaks. Well, that's in the next 24 hours. New Zealand consumer confidence for November. Global PMIs, mm. again, will we see slowing? And AGMs, we've got Premier Investments and... And TUA, which got me is on that one. to us. Mm. To us limited. Okay. All right. Um, let's have a look at what we're seeing. Oh my goodness, it's not even Friday. Um, in the markets, of course, it is the 30th of November. I'm not sure if you're aware, Danny. Um, we had a big window dressing gain coming through into the latter part of trade as, of course, we started to see investors position out after what has been a pretty good month globally for equities. Absolutely. And uh, there we go. The SIBO 200 up 7.4 points or just over half percent. ASX 200, for some reason, that index up 52 points and three quarters of a percent. 7,087 and uh, little Aussie Battler is doing pretty well as well today and uh, that's up at 64, uh, 66.4, 3 US cents and uh, just interesting to see Israel and Hamas, the truce, this is breaking news, um, have extended by a day and Erdogan has also blasted Netanyahu as the butcher of Gaza. So we'll also be looking to what happens with OPEC as well. Mm. So um, as this year has started, continued and continuing to be, it's all about inflation, except it might be now disinflation or deflation. Indeed. All right. Well, we will have, of course, everything for you tomorrow in response as well. Will, will David Scott have a Santa clause on his uh, Twitter feed? Will, of course, that uh, news from the US be positive for equity markets? We'll bring you all the latest tomorrow on AusBiz. It will be a Friday, Danny. It will be a Friday, and we will be back bright and early at 9.30 in between. Catch up with some of the great interviews today and have a wonderful evening. See you tomorrow.